<laughs> okay, I'll, Bobby Shy. Uh, Let the ambassador. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, honestly, uh, speaking on behalf of the hundred players who are really fortunate to be here and be part of the National Hockey League, and uh, it's a privilege to play the game. And uh, we're all fortunate enough that uh, we're part of this 100, and we're all like young kids. We're all thrilled to be here. It's a great honor. And uh, in saying that, we'll open it up to questions that anyone has. Start in the front right, Mike. Yeah, guys, uh, it's for all three of you. <laughs> it's the greatest player to ever play sitting at the podium right now. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> no. <laughs> he, he, uh, <laughs> no I, listen, uh, we talk about this all the time. That's what makes sports great, and that's what makes hockey wonderful. Uh, I think we're all in pretty much agreement that uh, Gordy was pretty special, and uh, these two guys here were pretty special also. And uh, we all had so much respect for what Gordy did and what he accomplished that uh, it's not a bad thing to be named in the top 100 behind a guy like Gordy Howe. Um, I think we all feel the same way. Absolutely. Gordy is, in my mind, um, the best that ever played the game. Um, I'm not sure if we'll ever see another one. I sometimes sit and look at his numbers as I sit sometimes and look at the numbers that these two guys put up. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> That's why we were high numbers. I, I, I'm saying, how in the world did they, did they do it? <laughs> but no, Gordy is, uh, uh, was a special player, a special man in, in my mind. And I think the three of us agree that he is uh, the best player ever. And I don't yeah, know I think, we'll he, he, I think the three one. of us would vote for that. So yeah. there you go. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, uh, you know, I agree with these guys that he was a, a special player. He could play any way uh, uh, that you wanted out there. And, and uh, great goal scorer, tough as we all know, and, and uh, always taking care of business. But uh, he was uh, uh, truly a, a great ambassador for the game. He loved the game. He played until he was 51 years old. And, and uh, that's that's pretty rare these <laughs> days, <laughs> except for Yager, my buddy. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. Yager. Yeah. Yeah. He's got him. Yeah. He but might break that. Yeah, he was certainly a very special player but I mean Wayne with all the numbers and Bobby really changed the game uh, uh, as far as uh, the way the game is, is played uh, by a defenseman and uh, so these two were very very special as well. Front right. Yo, Wayne Jim Hill CBS 2 here in Los Angeles. How do you feel Wayne when people give you a great deal of credit for the success of the NHL starting here in Los Angeles and in the western part of the United States when you came here? Yeah. Oh listen uh, I said this before, I came at the right time. We had guys like Luke Robitaille and Kelly Rudy and Marty McSorley and Tony Granato and Rob Blake. Everyone understood their scenario in a sense that we had to do more than just play the game, that we had to push and promote youth hockey and high school hockey. I think in 88 there was four high school teams and by 95 there was 120 high school teams. So everybody had a hand in it. And timing in life is everything. And when I came to L.A., uh, Mario was doing his thing in Pittsburgh. Brett Hall was recreating the St. Louis Blues. Iserman was in Detroit, and Mark Messi went to New York. And I think that each and every guy understood that not only were they hockey players, but they had to help sell and promote the sport of hockey. And we rode a wave together. And then along came this gentleman named Michael Eisner that fell in love with ice hockey and said, I want to have a hockey club. And... Everybody said, how can you name a team Mighty Ducks? That's just, how can you do that? But that helped propel and push hockey to another level. So <clears throat> I was a small part of it, as was Bobby in the, the 60s in Boston, as was Gordy in the 50s and 60s in Detroit. And then, of course, 1980 with uh, the team winning gold medal in uh, the United States, which was very special, and that really helped more and more youth kids that say, you know what, I want to be a hockey player and I want to play this sport. So everybody had a hand in it. I had a small part. Mario did, Bobby did, Gordy did, Messier did, Brett Hall did. And uh, we're all proud of it. You know, it's a privilege to play in the National Hockey League. And we all had the same dreams growing up as kids. 
Mario probably wanted to be Belleville. Bobby Orr probably wanted to be Doug Harvey. Huh? <laughs> that was pretty good, huh? <laughs> and uh, of course, I wanted to be Gordy. So we all had the same dream. And that's the interesting thing when we all meet. We all had the same dreams as kids that we wanted to play in the National Hockey League. And the game is in better shape today than it's ever been. These players from Austin Matthews to Connor McDavid, um, they're just tremendous players. So uh, everybody has a hand in it, and uh, we all feel very privileged that we're part of the National Hockey League. Wayne, over here. Back left. Kevin? Yeah, well, Wayne, obviously uh, when Bobby was uh, tearing up the NHL, you were uh, in the backyard trying to figure out the, the mm -hmm. game you were going to play, and you played with Mario in Canada Cup. Mm -hmm. You play, played against him. Could you talk a little bit about your memories of Bobby and what he did yeah. and also of playing against and yeah. with Mario? You know, my dad never really went to many hockey games. We, didn't have, we couldn't afford to go. These guys were so high-priced in those days. <laughs> uh, but he went to a Bruins uh, Leaf game. And uh, I was about seven years old, I remember, and he came back and he told me this guy, Bobby Orr, is pretty special. <clears throat> and all I remember saying to my dad is, yeah, but I can't play defense. <laughs> he goes, okay, forget about Bobby Orr. <laughs> uh, you're not going to be that kind of a player. Um, and uh, I've told this story many times. I played with a guy named Ace Bailey, and unfortunately he died in 9-11. And uh, I used to sit with him, and we were roommates, and... I think he probably got tired of me asking Bobby Orr's questions because all I wanted to know about was what did Bobby Orr eat and what did Bobby Orr do and how did Bobby Orr practice? And so uh, we're fans as kids and we're fans as players. Um, and then I got a chance to play with Mario. I went and watched Mario play junior hockey when he was 16 years old and he scored five goals and five assists, I think. And Somebody said, what do you think? I said, well, I think you can play for the Oilers right now. <laughs> and he was only 17. And then we got a chance to play together um, in the Canada Cup. And the only argument we had, or it wasn't even an argument, it was a debate. We played together the first game against Czechoslovakia, and we had a two-on-one, and I passed it to him. And he passed it back to me, and I missed. And we went to the bench, and I said, Mario, when I give you the puck, you score. You're, you're a better school scorer than I am. And I remember that. as fate has it, you know, we had a two-on-one that ended the Canada Cup in game three. Um, but we're all, we're all kids. We all idolize the game. We all grow up. And that's, a, that's been the most interesting thing for me about this top 100 is that whether it was uh, Doug Harvey or Bobby Orr or Mary Lemieux or Wayne Gretzky or Mark Messier or Gordie Howe, we all followed Hockey Night in Canada. We all followed the National Hockey League. We all collected hockey cards. And we all came from just really nice families and great parents that gave us an opportunity to play the game we loved. And we all wanted to be part of the National Hockey League. And uh, every now and then we go, well, that guy retired. How are we going to replace him? And then other guys come along. And like I said earlier, the game is in great shape today. And the players that are playing today are wonderful young men. And they carry themselves extremely well. And we should all be proud as ex-players, and the National Hockey League should be very proud of what these young men do today. It's very, very exhilarating. We'll go Pierre up front. Question for Bobby Orr. Um, Wayne just talked about him and Mario playing together in 87. I wonder if it's ever crossed your mind what it would have been like for you in a different world, given how you changed the game so much, your creativity, your vision, to have been in that era and share a an nice with these two guys. Well, I, I would have liked it. <laughs> I don't know if I would have wanted to play against them. <laughs> uh, you know, I, if, if I've had any disappointments, I'm a lucky guy. And, yeah, I wish I could have maybe played a little longer. Um, but uh, not being able to play against or with these guys in international hockey or whatever is, is something that it, it's disappointing to me because they're such great players. Um, Obviously, I've watched them play a lot. I watched Mario Lemieux score his first goal in Boston Garden, and they, it was go back and take a look at it. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty, it's a pretty good, pretty good goal. Yeah. I said, you I know, said, kid might have something going here. <laughs> <laughs> He's got but, a chance. Uh, but I, I, I really do enjoy uh, watching. I did enjoy watching both these young men, and it's the way they represent the game. And I think that's what makes our game so great. The, the, Players that have stayed in and ownership and management and the league and coaching and, and scouting. And, and I think that's why the, the game is so great. That's why there's so many nice people in the game. 
the players just don't walk away. They come back to try to help make the game even better. And these guys do it and many others. And I don't think there's another sport where, where the number of players come back and continue to uh, do things within the sport to make it better. And I, I think that says a lot for our game. And I think it says a lot for the people in our game. And to be here with the top 100 players, it's, it's pretty special. It's uh, uh, real nice. We've got time for two more right in the middle. Uh, yeah, this question is for Mr. Gretzky and Mr. Lemieux. Uh, Wayne, I know you've said that you feel Sidney Crosby is the best player in the game today. Mary, of course, you know him as a teammate, as an owner, in many mm -hmm. capacities. I mean, could you just share with us uh, an example or an illustration of what you feel separates him from his peers? I'll let Mario start. He, yeah, I've seen him play boss. a few times. <laughs> um, I think his work ethic, first of all, he's, he's the hardest, just like Wayne was when he played, he's the hardest working guy out there. Um, whether it's a practice or a three-on-three -three game in practice, he wants to win, he wants to be the best. And uh, I think his skating ability is, is second to none. Uh, his strength, his lower body strength is unbelievable. If he goes one-on-one -on -one in, in the corner, he's, he's able to come out and, and, and make a play. Um, his passing ability is, is probably the best in the league. And uh, his vision, of course, is, is uh, also one of the best. So he put all that together. And now he's starting to score some goals this year, uh, leading the league in, in scoring. So uh, he's just a, a special player that comes along um, you know, not too often. So uh, um, I've been very lucky to have him at my house for a few years uh, uh, as a tenant. And uh, um, to be able to, to watch him every night, uh, very special. Well, I, I agree with Mario, everything he said, and he's the best player in the game. Um, he's earned that mantle, and uh, his work ethic is as good or better than anybody in hockey. Um, we encourage, and I know Bobby's very close to Connor, that that's the guy that he's chasing, and Connor sees him in his vision, and that's what makes the game wonderful, is that you want to be as good as the best player. Right now, Crosby's the best player, and uh, you have to earn your stripes. Until somebody knocks him off the castle, that's the way it's going to be. And he won three uh, or two Stanley Cups and uh, two gold medals, and he's handled pressure and handled everything with grace and dignity, and uh, he deserves all the accolades he's getting. He's uh, really uh, been special, and he's been very lucky in the sense that he had Mario to lean on. and. A uh, guy who's been through all of it and a guy that understands the pressures that go with being the best player. And uh, that's an advantage that uh, that Sydney probably took advantage of. Left side. Question for Mr. Gretzky. Mm -hmm. uh, we're always saying that records are made to be broken. You can probably sleep in peace with few of your <laughs> record. Uh, what might be the equivalent of a season of 92 goals or 215 points? To 93. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know. The game has changed. Obviously, it's more defensive now. It's tougher to score. Although they get more power plays now. Uh, I used to get one five on three every ten weeks. Now we get one three a game. That's pretty nice. And three on three in overtime, I like that too. The three of us would have been pretty good in a three on three. <laughs> um, do, but, any of you, do any of you know the Gretzky penalty rule? What is that? When you guys, don't you remember that? No. What? When you used to go down to get the three on three. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Geez, that rule. That was for you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but listen, the goalies today are more athletic. When Patrick Waugh and Grant Fuhrer and Marty Brodeur came along, it changed the game. Those guys had as big impact in the game as any athletes that ever played the game from myself, Mario, Bobby, Gordy. They, the, it used to be, and I say this in a nice way, the chubby guy was the goaltender <laughs> because he couldn't skate. And those three guys sort of changed everything. And now the goalies are the best athletes on each team. It's harder to score. It's really difficult. And um, that's the way it is right now. So, but. 93 is probably the comparison. <laughs> there you and go. <laughs> if, it, if it's possible, a question for Mario in French. Uh, Mario, tantôt. No. Can we do it in French? You can ask him after the show. Okay, perfect. Let's go. Exactement.
<laughs> Dan on the in the back, last question. Um, you know, you guys were talking a lot about Gordy and, and how he's the best, but I don't think you get an argument that you three would either, whether he comes before or after or whatever, me, the other, you guys are the other three. Have you ever been in a setting like this where the three of you are sitting up there together talking? And, and first what is it like first time. to, to, first to time. be this, to just to be yeah. in a setting and be around the, each other? The three yeah, of we're, we're like little kids. We're having, we're having more fun than anybody <laughs> to be part of this oh, with all the other guys back there. It's been really a great honor to be here. That's really all I can say. It's, it's a great thrill. Probably you can have that. This, it's exciting. I was, yeah. I, I don't see, I, from a distance, I see Wayne and, and Mario, but I don't spend a lot of time with them. And to come here and be able to spend some time with them, have a few laughs, talk a little hockey, uh, it's very special. Very, very, very special. Although Wayne and I did play one game together. Oh, I'll, yeah. I'll leave that with you. <laughs> we, we actually did play a game together. I was so mad. I had to fly from Hawaii, and the only reason I flew from Hawaii to Winnipeg was so I could play with Bobby Orr. <laughs> there you go. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Good job, Wayne. A reminder.